week 10 developer days. Thank you, Arne. <laughs> All right, if, if you're ready, Kevin, it's time to <coughs> bring on the stage Kevin Franklin, live from London, United Kingdom, who's going to tell us about the Cute User Survey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keller. So, so my name's Kevin Franklin, and I'm an independent market consultant. When I was thinking about how to introduce myself today, I did think of a few maybe user-friendly, more user-friendly titles, considered a few things. Um, freelance arms dealer was one of them. International human trafficker was another one. But I stuck with in independent market consultant. And I guess I was just a little concerned about the perception of an audience full of extremely talented and bright, cute developers, um, and the perception of a consulty, markety, businessy type coming in and um, throwing in advice and uh, 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 about what to do. So, so let me give you some context of, of me for those of you who don't know me. So, before I was an independent market consultant. Um, the end of last year, I spent five years in the developer relations function at Nokia. And um, for most of that time, was involved with Qt. So involved in, in helping to grow the Qt community through working with our partners and working with learning and training materials. So I do have quite a lot of experience and, um, in, in this area. So, so I've come to Qt Insights with that background. And actually, just as an aside, when I did spend that five years at, uh, at Nokia in the Qt team, tirelessly, some might say heroically, working to help grow the Qt ecosystem, not once did I get anywhere near this keynote podium. <laughs> but you go away, you leave, you become an independent consultant, and they can't wait to get you up here. So there's maybe there's a life lesson in that. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what it is. I'm actually very honoured and privileged to be standing here presenting to you. Um, I'm sandwiched in between some very illustrious and smart speakers, so I'm not going to be here for long. Um, but I want to spend a few minutes telling you about Qt Insights. Um, Tommy's already touched upon it a bit, a bit earlier. Um, and uh, uh, what I'm going to be telling you about Qt Insights, I'm going to keep it to three basic things. I'm going to tell you what it is, what is Qt Insights, roughly what did we learn, what did we find out, and and what you should do about it. I'll keep it to that, basically. Um, I did look at my material um, yesterday, and it was a little bit short on kind of lies and spin. And I know you'd expect that from a market consultant, so I've put a few lies in. They're very obvious lies. You should be able to recognize them, so. So what is Qt Insights? Qt Insights was um, devised and conducted by a company called Quadriga Consulting, and that's who I work for. Puerto Rico Consulting, and we are a small independent um, research company. It's been going for 10 years and specialise in market research, uh, thought leadership, and, um, and, and projects focused on technology companies like that. So Cute Insights, the project, is a, is a product of us. The views in it are ours. It's very factual based, but the, any views in it and the analysis comes from us. Having said that, we were, we were supported by some fantastic partners, and without those partners, the project wouldn't have gone ahead. So I wanted to publicly thank those guys um, for, for all their support. The project took a flow that, that, was, that was basically this. This was, a, this was the flow of the project. It was not necessarily sequential, as you see there, but it was basically around some research, conversation with the community, analysis of all of that stuff, and then communication. And the elements were these. So the, f the first thing we did back in June, we ran a, a developer survey, survey, a very comprehensive developer survey. And that hands up, I know lots of you took part in it. Hands up in the room if you took part in that survey. OK, thanks very much for that. I mean, if thanks due to the sponsors, million thanks due to you guys. You know, the heart of this project, everything this project was based on was the rich data that we got from that survey. We've got an incredibly rich data scene coming from that. Around 2,000 people took part. It took about 20 minutes, so a significant amount of time has gone into it. Um, 93 countries, and, and um, it was extremely useful in putting that together. We also did quite a lot of qualitative discussion, so discussion with the community. We also formalised that in two 
discussion groups in, in Silicon Valley and, and actually here in Berlin. And the idea of that was to take the output of the, of the survey, some of the initial findings, and get input from thought leaders from around the Qt community and also representative people from, from the various different diverse places in the community to get their context and how they felt. So it was a really important part of that. We used social media to facilitate the, the conversation throughout, and we produced a white paper. So that white paper was uh, published at the beginning of September. Has anybody seen that white paper? Anyone downloaded it? Okay, well, I'll, I'll send out a link later today on, on, on the Twitter feed, and uh, maybe you could download that. Um, it's been downloaded so far by about 2,000 people in about 80 countries, so it's already starting to get out there. Um, and that contains, it doesn't contain a completely comprehensive view because there's so much, we have so much information, but it contains a summary and a, a snapshot of some of the data we got, we got from that. We have a website, cuteinsights.com, where that's the focal point where all the web stuff gets published. Uh, we have videos from the discussion groups, we have the white paper, we have blogs, um, and co uh, content from our sponsors. And we did a media release that uh, got some coverage recently um, on about 300 online publications, and these are just some of them. So, so those were the kind of the elements of it, but the real output, the real output of, of this project was, was what we, we think we could provide to you guys, and that's substantive evidence. So substantive evidence in the form of data, facts, that cannot be argued with about the cute community. And, I, and I, didn't, I didn't mention earlier, but you know, I think this study that we've done is, is probably the most comprehensive study of the cute community that's ever been done. So you know, really would like us, um, would, would like to present it for you guys to take advantage of. Um, I guess the first of one of my lies, actually, was that this, this, section, this, this presentation's got three sections. I've snuck, I've snuck a little another one in there. And I think it's probably one of maybe the most important bit, which is why should you care? You know, why should you care about this stuff? And I wanted to present my view of the world. Today, what is it, the 8th of October, nearly 5 to 10. We have the people in this room. We have the Board of Cute community. Some of them are in the room down the road. Give them a little wave. I think we need to give them a wave up the road. And we have the world. Pretty simplistic view of the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but nonetheless accurate. <laughs> And in many ways, you know, while I'm honoured to be standing here talking to you guys, the people in this room, in many ways it's totally the wrong audience. You know, I'm talking to you guys. You, you're the guys that, that, that not need to be talked to. It's the world that needs to know about this. And our role in all of this is basically to give you the ammunition. Maybe there is a, a role as, a, as, a, as an arms dealer. I just thought of that. But, you know, it's to give you the ammunition to go out there and tell the world about, about this community you've got. So that was just a little sneak in one there. Okay, so what did we discover? I'm interested to know, some of these words have already come up, but um, we could probably summarise the, 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 the cute ecosystem today with three words, and that's vibrant, broad, and evolving. And I'm not going to go into, I haven't got time to go into the, the results. I've got, actually got a presentation later today in the start of the edition where I'm going to go into this in much more depth. But I'm going to give you some of the statistics that we, that we got, some of the evidence. So this has already been mentioned by Tommy, that Overall, 95% of uh, the cute community have give, give a, a, a satisfaction ratio of either extremely satisfied or satisfied. And one of the other interesting things to look at is as time goes on, uh, you can see people become more satisfied. So those with the most experience have uh, the most degrees of satisfaction, which is great. And this is a little bit more busy. I haven't got much time to talk about this one. But you know, this looks at the change in cute usage in the past year correlated with the satisfaction rating. And you can see, I think it's 60% of people are increasing their usage, either significantly or slightly. Um, around a third are staying the same, and a tiny percentage, just 6%, have decreased in usage. And even amongst those, if you look at the satisfaction rates, it doesn't look great compared to the others, but even amongst those, there's only a very small dissatisfaction rating. So when you combine that with all the other things that's going on, we've got a very vibrant ecosystem, and there's lots of other elements. The other key word is breadth, or broad, breadth, diverse. And this is true of Qt in so many ways. You know, there were so many parameters we found the breadth of the ecosystem, you know, in terms of the applications that are produced. Um, if you look at the ones that are used by yourself or your own organization and add them to the business, which is probably right, there's roughly 50-50 split between businesses and consumers. Um, so, you know, diverse set of applications being produced there. If you look at the company size, where, where the companies in which Qt developers are based, 
it ranges all the way from independent developers, um, hobbyists, all the way to people working in large corporates. And um, we took the names of those large corporates. Unfortunately, we couldn't publish that in the report, but we did get some very, very interesting names, actually, of, of corporations that, that people were working at. So they're just two of the elements. There was lots of other elements of breadth in terms of the RSs that were targeted, in terms of the technology segments that were targeted, all that kind of stuff. So take a look in the report. The third area is that it's evolving. Now, um, I'm just going to kind of dip into a little bit of what's in the report, if for those of you that haven't read it, which is most of you, about how the, the Q ecosystem is evolving. And what I need to do is, is share with you something we, we did in the report. I mean, I guess rich seam of data plus consultant equals market segmentation. First rule of marketing, I guess. But um, what we did, we actually found it very useful to take that very rich theme of data and look a little at how different parts of the Qt ecosystem, you know, it's such a diverse thing, it's very difficult to kind of you know, really pin down and get your arms around. So this, we found this a very useful thing. And um, I'll just describe exactly, roughly what these, these segments were. So seriously embedded are Qt developers who have at least 30% of their focus on, the imbe on embedded devices or systems. There's many, many more of you who, who do it to some degree, um, but 30% focus very much on embedded. It's a very distinct and separate group, and um, they often buy flowers for their partners. <laughs> so they're a nice bunch. The exclusively desktop bunch. So 95% plus focus on desktop. I guess this is where Qt Heritage is. It's the most experienced group by far. Most experienced Qt developers are found here but they've got a tendency to kick their dogs. <laughs> Bit mean. Uh, mobile inclined. So mobile inclined and committed multi-screen, both of these groups are looking at multiple screens. But the mobile inclined, I've got a focus on smartphone and tablet. They're not mobile developers by any means, but more, more, more of a, a focus. M new acute developers are much more prevalent in here, and they tend to mix their recycling with the main rubbish. I guess we all do it. And um, the last group we've got is the most diverse folk is, 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 the, is the committed multi-screen. So they, they focus on the mo most diverse range of devices. Um, one little fact is they're more li most likely to use LGPL than, than, than most other groups. Uh, but they always remember their mother's birthday. So you might have seen one or two lines that I put in there. <laughs> Actually, it's quite sad that I've got some really mind-blowing things being presented on this stage, and I get a clap for talking about that, so nonsense. Um, so we kind of, we put those in, put, put into those groups, and this is the, the split of the ecosystem today, roughly. Um, I'm going to hurry along now, but, but the whole point of this wasn't to talk about mother's birthday, today, it was to talk about the evolution that's going on. And by doing this, we can look at what the evolution look like, looks like. So the evolution is based, based on what people tell us they're going to be doing in two years' time. The devices are going to be targeting in two years' time. And what we see here is the seriously embedded group, distinct and separate, really going at it still on, on embedded. Very distinct and separate group. And then you have quite a big shift from people who are focused exclusively on desktop down to multi-screen and across the mobile and client. And you know, that's looking to set to, to shrink and that's looking set to grow. But before, we all, before the alarms at the back go off and start flashing red and we all go rushing out screaming mobile, I just wanted to kind of put that into context because in context, what we did was we asked people to you know, look at their focus. If you look at the aggregate focus of the entire ecosystem, it's still, what, 62% on desktop now and still 50-odd percent um, in two years' time. So it's still very much focused. I'm getting told to stop. My last slide-ish. And just to, to further level on that, the developers who target desktop to some degree today is 90, 91%. In two years' time, any guesses? 91%. So, you know, it's very much a shift, but with the roots in mobile roots there. What should you do? Join the conversation. Really join the conversation, read the report, get involved. Evangelize, evangelize, evangelize. We've given you the tools, that's what needs to be done. Tell us what you want to do next. Um, in terms of uh, what this uh, exhibition's about, not evangelize, evangelize, evangelize. Badges, badges, badges. Come and get your badges. We're over in the, um, in the exhibit, exhibitors area. We want everybody to wear their badges, show which part of uh, the QE kissing they fit, and start the dialogue. So I've gone over a little bit. Thank you very much. Um, come and speak to me, and um, I look forward to meeting you later. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Kevin.
while uh, Lars is getting ready to go on stage. Um, I think I, I, I think I'm telling you a small story from my life. <laughs> 